Hello folks, this is Mike. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at the Bosch 12 volt compact angle drill. We're going to look at how to use it, its special features, its assets, and its liabilities, and there are a couple. We're also going to do some tests to make sure it can actually do the work. So be sure to stay tuned and we'll get started. Now before we get started, let me remind you that I do a lot of these tool and product reviews, woodworking, and do-it-yourself projects. And if you're interested in those things, you may want to go below and subscribe to my channel and ring that bell. That way you can be alerted when we have upcoming videos. Now remember that this drill is a specialty drill. This is an angle drill. It's no way meant to replace one of these. This is the workhorse of your shop. This one will not have the power, strength, torque, or flexibility that this one has. But in certain situations, this one is a godsend, like working in tight places and corners and confined spaces in furniture and cabinets or just anywhere that even a compact drill may be just a bit too long, like in the shelving system. Or working under a chair rung like I'm working here, none of my other drills will do the job here. And it's also great as just a backup drill. You can even do like I do and chuck up uh, your drill bit in this one, your driver bit in this one, and that way you don't have to spend all of your time during a project changing bits. So this drill could be just the ticket for you. So now let's move on with our unboxing and our review. This angle drill is part of Bosch's kit tool series based around the 12 volt battery and charger. Now other compatible tools include an impact driver, a regular drill, a flashlight, a multi-tool, and some other tools. So what's included? Well first you get a zip-up soft-sided carrying case. And of course you get the drill itself. And you get one battery. Now the battery is a 2.0 AH lithium ion. And you'll notice that I like to number and date my batteries. That way when they expire, I'll know how long they lasted. Uh, the drill will also use uh, the older 10.8 volt batteries that used to be standard for their compact tools a year or two ago. The charger is very compact. A 100% recharge takes 65 minutes with these 2.0 batteries. It's 110 to 120 volt only. That's because it's marketed here in the United States. I'm sure there's a 220 volt version for the world market as well. Notice the voltage range. It's 7.2 to 12 volts. That means you can charge either the 12 volt battery that came with it or the older 10.8 volt batteries. The pouch contains uh, your manuals for the drill and the charger. There's also a warranty booklet. You get three years on the drill and two years on the battery. So let's talk about the drill, its features, and its capabilities. Now first it has a 3 8 inch keyless chuck. It has a three position reversing switch with the middle position being off, which also locks the chuck. Now this facilitates the proper and safe way to change your bits. So with the chuck locked, you can loosen with a twist and change your bit and then retighten. Now folks, I wasn't born yesterday. I know that everybody in the real world will grab that chuck and fire up the drill and power it open and closed. But even if you do that, you can lock the clutch when you're finished and then give it an extra twist. And I find that chucks tend to loosen during use otherwise and the bit will fall out. I've got three different brands of cordless drills and I have this problem with all of them. It has this nice paddle switch to turn the motor on and off. And of course it's variable speed so the harder you depress it, the faster the motor turns. And of course you'll notice that the LED work light automatically comes on when you pull the trigger. The grip is rubberized which of course makes it more comfortable and easier to hold without it slipping in your hand. Notice these three green LED lights. They indicate how much charge your battery has left with three lights equaling a max charge. And don't worry here if you don't notice these lights. There's like every other drill there's a self protection circuit built in and it's going to shut your drill down before there's any damage to your battery. 
The batteries are easily removed by pushing in on the tabs, pulling it out, and simply slapping in another. If you have a medical problem, arthritis, or weak hands maybe, uh, these batteries can be difficult to remove. When my wife uses the drill, she says it hurts her hands. I took a squeeze clamp and added some half inch thick plastic stick-on bumpers. And you can see this makes short work of battery removal. The feature I like best is this articulating head. You simply depress the button and you can reset the head angle to any of five positions from 90 degrees to a zero degree stick drill position. This is very handy when working in tight spaces. Most of the drills on the market are strictly 90 degrees, which doesn't always fit the situation. Not only that, the LED light is actually attached to the head, so no matter which way you position the head, your work is always illuminated. The articulating head does cost you in head clearance, though. Notice it stands about 4 and 3 8 inches above the table here. Other brands have fixed heads that can be a half inch shorter or better. In my case though, I think the articulating head is worth the trade-off. One thing I don't like about this drill and the other 12 volt angle drills on the market is that they only have one variable speed. Now if you look at a normal drill, you'll notice they always have a number one and a number two speed. One for driving screws and bolts, that's a high torque setting. And then you have a high speed setting for spinning drill bits. When you only have one variable speed, one end or the other is going to suffer, high torque or high speed. Everything else is going to be a compromise. So how does this affect its performance? Well, I'm going to show you some work tests I did. I'm using a piece of landscape timber that obviously I've used for tests in other videos. It's pretty used, doesn't it? So first I tried a variety of drill bits, starting with a simple twist bit, then a countersink, a one inch brad point, a one and a half inch spade bit, and finally a two inch hole saw. And in every case I was able to drill a pretty good hole. My performance was on a par, I think, with my 12 volt compact drill. Next we tried wood screws, and this performance was really good. I was able to drill, for instance, a number eight by three inch wood screw with no pilot hole all the way in and it even countersunk itself. Next I took a twist bit and drilled a 3 16th inch pilot hole for 1 quarter inch lag screws. Now I had good results up to 2 inch long. When I tried a 2 and a half inch lag, the drill just didn't have quite enough muscle to sink it all the way in. In contrast, I set my compact drill on the low setting and I was able to sink a 3 inch lag screw in the same board without a pilot hole. Now this illustrates the limitation of having a, just a one speed drill. There are special wood screw lubricants on the market that you can use in this situation. I don't have one right now so I just use some WD-40 for this test. Now don't try this at home. It's going to stain your wood and it'll mess up your finish. It won't stick to it. With the lube though, I was able to sink the two and a half and three inch lag screws right up to the head. Just something to consider. So what do these tests tell us? Well, we know that with drill bits up to two inches wide, it does a pretty good job. Uh, almost as good as my compact drill. But with regular fasteners, especially large diameter, long fasteners, it just doesn't have the punch to sink those like the compact drill does. But remember, this is a specialty drill for use in tight spaces where your normal drill won't go. So what you have to ask yourself is will you be using this big stuff in that situation? If you will, you may want to consider one of the other angle drills on the market in the 18 to 24 volt range with two speeds. Now, I haven't tested any of those drills. I don't know their capabilities, but it makes more sense that more power would equal more work. But you need to do your research and make sure. Now, would I buy this drill again? And the answer is yes. Most of my work is cabinet making and furniture making. And I use this drill all the time in tight, confined spaces and cabinets and, and, and furniture and, and other places. And I'm normally driving number six to number 10 wood screws. And for that, it does a fine job. 
I'm installing hardware, drawer slides, pocket hole screws, and that sort of thing. And for that, it does a bang up job. And I would give it a thumbs up for this purpose. Anyway, folks, that's going to do it for today. If you've enjoyed this video, please go below and like it. And we have more great videos coming, so please be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. And don't forget, questions, comments are welcome. And I will try to answer you. So until next time, folks, thanks for watching.